Hey everyone, this is Ciderhelm. Before we get into the video, there are three quick things I want to let you guys know about. First is the 17th episode of Turning Point, which just released today. You can check it out here by clicking the annotation here or down below. Second, the first video of mine covering the all-star matchups currently going on is now up. This covers the second match between North America and China. And finally, one more announcement. I'm likely going to be streaming a bit this evening at www.twitch.tv slash Ciderhelm. So there's a couple things I want to talk about real quick on the North America vs. China games last night. And if you don't want any spoilers, back out of this movie now. Uh, now that I've given you a second to back out if you wanted to, North America got destroyed. Uh, both games they lost pretty convincingly. Uh, and I think that the the main things to take away from it, or just at a glance, everybody's going to look at this if they didn't watch the games and say, that's what we expected. Uh, you know, North America just can't measure up to China or whatever. Uh, they're not going to do well in the Asian scene. And it really does reinforce that stereotype. It really, it, it really does. And it's partly justified. Um, I know certainly when I went into these games, I was not expecting North America or Europe to be able to measure up. Uh, I think Europe may have gotten a little, <laughs> a little bit of a tougher matchup. Um, but certainly, my impression of the game watching the first one was, okay, this is more of the same, this is what I'm expecting. Now one quick thing about game one. China had Rumble, and Rumble is an exceptionally strong champion. And if I'm not mistaken, this is pre-nerf Rumble because they just put in a round of nerfs on him. Uh, he is an exceptionally strong champion. Uh, and it really showed in... <laughs> in this matchup. Uh, and then the next game, interestingly, China actually banned Rumble, even though they had just played him. But this is because they were afraid that North America would pick Rumble up as a first pick after how effective he was in that first game. Uh, so that's just something worth keeping in mind. But then the second game, the second game was actually really ridiculously good for North America. And if you didn't watch it, you owe it to yourself to go and watch it. Uh, because North America did a good job. And um, there were some amazing plays in there. Uh, the first blood from McSpecial was, was, was astounding that he pulled it off and it was just done flawlessly. So first blood from McSpecial, um, Urgot had a number, and this is double lift, Urgot had a number of moments where it's like, okay, you're crazy. And then a few seconds later, it's like, wow, you actually pulled that off. That is amazing. Um, the second game, North America got a huge lead and <laughs> And they they squandered it. And part of it was just team comp uh, more than anything. I talk I talked about this in the pro playbacks. Uh, make sure you go watch that too. Uh, I don't want to get too much into it, but part of it is team comp. Um, they did not have any kind of tower pressure. They could not push any tower without getting into a head-on engagement with China. So if China wanted to defend, if China wanted to force a fight, it was very easy for them to do. Um, and this is mainly to do with the lack of auto attack range to deal damage to the towers uh, on pretty much anybody on the team. Um, with Urgot, because they picked Urgot, and Urgot did, again, fantastically well, but unfortunately with his short attack range, not talking about his Q or anything like that, just attack range, he cannot apply pressure from a distance. He's not like a Caitlyn, he's not like a Tristana, he's not going to be able to edge in and get those shots off, or like any other AD carry. Um, so that's, I, I really feel like that was a big issue, because North America did a great job, um, but it's very hard to seal the deal with a team comp that lacks any kind of tower pressure. Uh, so even when you're so far ahead, you still have to engage in those risky engagements. Uh, and I think they made a couple mistakes getting a little overconfident as well, but... Um, what else was there in that match that was interesting? Oh, in both matches, there were Baron steals from the opposing team. Uh, in the first match, North America managed to steal it away from China, and that was cool, and they even picked up a few kills there. Unfortunately, China was just so far ahead, and they just played it right. Uh, you know, despite that major slip-up on their part, China still won the first game. Uh, it was not something that was going to be turned around. In the second game... This is something I talked about. It's a, the Dignitas Baron curse. Dignitas just lost all sorts of standing off of their Baron pushes because they would actively engage Baron, not really taking into consideration the people who can come and potentially steal it, not really taking into consideration people who can come with teleport across the map and engage on uh, on Baron while they're doing it. Um, they they lost 
tons of games. It's, it's why GGU is where it is. It's why TSM is where it is, etc. And it's why Dignitas is where they are. Um, now, obviously, only Scaro from Dignitas is on the All-Star team. And I'm not trying to say this is only Dignitas. I, I really like Dignitas as a team. It's just something that... It costs their team in particular more than other teams, but a lot of teams make these mistakes. Um, so they engaged, the North American team engaged on Mount Baron, and it looked by all accounts like the right idea because there are three enemies on the other side of the map, on the clear other side of the map, chasing down Dyrus Malphite. Uh, and it just, okay... Like that, you're gonna go in, you're gonna engage Baron, you're gonna get it. Unfortunately, they had the Sona there, and they had more, much more importantly, the Nasus was still there. Uh, Nasus is tanky enough that he can get in and at least try to land that smite. He managed to. Another thing that happened there, this comes back to the mobility thing, not really paying attention to map mobility, not really paying attention to teleport. Uh, Rise almost immediately as soon as that Baron was engaged, almost immediately backed off from the chase on Dyrus. And I don't think they were paying attention to this. Uh, I don't think North America was. They may have seen it very, you know, they may have seen it perfectly and just not done anything about it because they were pretty sure they were going to get Baron. But anyway, Rise got in there too. Um, so it was essentially three on four. China lost a couple people there, but they stole Baron and they were so far behind that that was a huge thing. Uh, and then North America, in my opinion, made a mistake going after them despite three of them, three of them remaining, having Baron, uh, and then engaging under a tower, and that's all in the pro playbacks. Um, but anyway, the major lesson that I took out of this whole thing, uh, the major impression I took out of the whole thing is... North America did well. There were some genuinely good plays. It wasn't just a special. It wasn't just double lift. I thought they all did a fairly good job. Um, and there were just some generally good plays. Dyrus had some good plays, uh, very notable plays. So uh, they all did. Um, I, you know, St. Vicious did well as well. Uh, so even if you take it as a message that North America can't compete against Asia, you know, they went to it or they lost two games in a row. Uh, we all expected it, whatever. There's still some hope to be had. Uh, there is. So they did a good job. And I, I don't think that should be understated. Um, well, anyway, that's my impression of the North America matches. We're going to see more tomorrow. Uh, make sure you watch the videos, and we will have more All Star. I will have more All Star coverage over the weekend. Thank you guys. Be awesome. Be good. Be happy.